Okay, now California has raised its minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 an hour. The law was pushed by the Service Employees International Union. Supporters of the law would like to see it go national, including here in New York. But wage increases mean costs go up for the restaurants and prices go up for consumers. Franchise owners say they're scraping by and worry they won't be able to stay in business. So, Rick, should we have a similar law here in New York? A uh, simple answer I would say is no. Uh, to be clear, there are winners for minimum wage increases. Those workers that keep their jobs and don't have their hours significantly cut certainly gain. But there are a number of losers as well, workers that either lose their job or have their hours cut significantly lose. You mentioned the franchise workers. You know, much of the uh, focus in California has been on, you know, McDonald's and Burger King and, and very wealthy corporations. Well, the people who are really going to be burdened with this are not the corporations, but the owners of the franchises. And there are a number of small uh, franchises, uh, you know, not just McDonald's and Burger King, that are going to be affected by this. Um, and then you also have consumers that lose because ultimately this is going to mean higher prices. Two things that bother me with this particular case. First, the increase is so large from $16 to $20. That's a 25% uh, increase. But the thing that really bothers me is why are we isolating only on fast food workers? There are a number of low income uh, groups, whether it be home health aides, daycare center workers, grocery store uh, uh, employees. Why are they not being covered? I, I really worry about um, a law that focuses on one sure. small group. My son worked for McDonald's last summer. Why does he need a $20 an hour job? I think there are more effective ways of dealing with either corporations that are making too much money or um, low income workers that are heads of households. Yeah, well, the idea is not to go after the corporations but to raise the people that and, and not like your son but someone who's got it for a summer job but then people who depend on these for their credit. full time there are much job. E better ways of targeting those people that really need the help. Luke? Thinking of those people, I did manual labor for many years, and I remember one particular job where I unloaded trucks for minimum wage, and I made $200 a week. And every morning I got on the train and thought to myself, what the hell am I doing? Why am I breaking my back? Because this is the only job I could get to try to support myself. And I also at that time still had help from my parents, which everybody else I worked with did not. I mean, it's so dehumanizing uh, for workers who are in those positions. I've also worked in the food industry and got stiffed when I was flipping hamburgers on the beach and a part-time job and the, the local business person just decided not to pay us. And then uh, when we talked to him, locked himself in a meat locker so he didn't have to deal <laughs> with us. I mean, these kind of things happen. And uh, I really feel for the workers. You, you raise good points in terms of the larger implications and thinking about this holistically. But when we look at minimum wage federally and in many states, it's just simply too low and it needs to change, and I'm happy to see the progress that's been made on that front. So we could see, Tara, uh, restaurants themselves changing, reducing the number of workers. I mean, we, there's a lot of automation already. You go up and order your Burger King by pushing a screen. Mm -hmm. There could be a, 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 a adverse impact on the workers. I think there absolutely will be. Um, if you uh, listened or watched any of the videos from some of the uh, franchisee employees, uh, employers, um, even just some some of the smaller um, restaurants that are, or that aren't sure, quite frankly, if they are part of this or not. One of the things that consistently kept coming up was, well, I think I'm going to have to look at using more AI or you know whatever franchise I'm with. They've already started talking with us about using more AI. So I absolutely see that going on. And in fact, one um, employer, I, I believe believe it was Burger King, but I don't remember for sure. He specifically said that he envisioned within a year that the person you were speaking to in the drive-thru would not necessarily be an, a human. So I absolutely see more AI being used. Um, you know, with AI, you don't have to worry about days off. You don't necessarily have to worry about, you know, whether somebody shows up late for a shift. And once this trend starts, it's only going to continue. One other thing about those kiosks is I hope everyone's paying attention because while this is a California law and we're questioning whether or not it should occur in New York, that increase is probably going to be nationwide. Um, I just happen to notice one of the fast food places I go to, and I won't name them, within the last two weeks, increased their prices of about 10 cents to 20 cents on almost everything. 
Mm. And New York does have a law, it went into effect the same day, a, a mandating $20 an hour for, or New York City does, excuse mm -hmm. me, for delivery workers. Mm -hmm. uh, Nina? Uh, <laughs> Nina, <laughs> jump in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nina, jump in there. I mean, do you yeah. think we should have a law like this? Um, I, I'm sympathetic to what Luke said, that this is about economic justice, and so we have to find a way, especially for low-skilled workers, to be able to make ends meet and do it with dignity and integrity. And I'm inclined also to Rick's offer or al you know thoughts about an alternative such as universal basic income or perhaps even cash payments, which would be more targeted. However, as to this particular uh, proposal, we don't have to guesstimate about what's going to happen because the National Review actually uh, reported on a study that was commissioned by West Hollywood, which had moved initially to just providing, um, I think it was $17 minimum wage for hotel workers, and then eventually expanded that to other industries. And so all of the expectations about what will likely happen actually did happen there. In particular, businesses slashed uh, hours for 17% of workers. Um, the, uh, uh, the, they closed shop and they laid off 20% uh, of workers and one third of them turned to technology um, ordering at the I would be sense. careful though that was commissioned by uh, a political entity that was against this that was not I, I, I want to see the academic studies that show that because those numbers seemed a little bit extreme even though I'm not in favor of this uh, okay, Luke, briefly. and automation's yeah. coming regardless uh, I just I can't get my head around systematically underpaying people for manual labor yeah. because of perceived economic effects. So maybe maybe the minimum wage should go up for all workers. Well, the national is at seven twenty-five still, which is crazy. Right. But twenty dollars an hour is forty thousand dollars a year. That's well it's above. It's not a average. lot of money these days. And somebody's going to have to okay, pay. Now